So welcome to another Bitwig device series. On this one, we can talk about the reverb. Now, I know that reverb, it's pretty obvious if you have some experience, but you know, if you don't, the Bitwig device, a reverb device is a bit weird. You know, it's just hard to look at. So I'm not going to be very technical. I'm just going to try to use words anyone can understand, uh, just to try to keep the video short and useful. So this is a reverb has two faces. If you subdivide, everything gets easier. So as you can see at the top, the very top, you have early and you have late. So right now, if we remove the late ones, uh, everything is going to get easier. Now, if I uh, have a drum loop right here, and if I play the drum loop, we can hear that the reverb is pretty noticeable. Now I'm going to go and we're going to move the late mix. Now the late mix, it's for the late uh, delayed reflections. So if we turn it all the way down, this a whole part of the reverb gets disabled. So the only thing we are using is the early reflections. So if I play it right now, not so big. So of course, we're going to talk about this in a minute, but first we're going to get the, you know, this out of the way. And once we know how this works, this one is going to get a bit more, uh, a bit more easier. I'm going to go to the mix. I'm going to make it like, I don't know, 50%. All right. So let's start over. So we're going to go and start right here on the early uh, ref uh, reflections. So as you know, uh, reverb consists on reflections uh, of your sound bouncing on the walls and how long uh, they take. So right here, you have two different profiles. You have a room and you have a hall. And now it depends on where you are standing. The sound is going to, you know, be a little bit different because if you're in a room, everything is going to sound much closer because everything will bounce on the walls and it will come back to you. And, you know, everything is short because you are in a room. But if you're in a hall, you're going to be, you know, right in the background so the sound will take much longer to get into your ears and just by using the default configuration we can actually uh notice this if i play it everything sounds like very close and if i go to hall so it's like bouncing it's like like jumping and this is because this is a much larger ambience right just imagine yourself shouting into a canyon you know, you just shout something and then a little while the sound comes back. It's because it's bouncing on the canyon, then reverberating and coming back to you. But you hear the sound, the sound that comes back after a little while. So this is pretty much the same idea. If you're in a short ambience, it's going to be very close. Hall, it's going to be very large. Okay, so of course, then you have the size of the room. Depends on, you know, what you're uh, selecting. The size is 100%. Or you can go much larger. You can go to 200%. Of course, it's just a larger ambience. If you go very short, everything is very short. Same thing with Hall. If you go 100%, we can go to Absurd. It's like, you know, just a, 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 almost an un unusable uh, reverb. Then, of course, you get the pre-delay. So, of course, uh, when we play something, we can hear that the sound comes a little bit after. So you can uh, you can choose how much uh, you know you want of this. So right now, by default, it's four milliseconds, and the pre-delay is going to be the sound or how much time the reverb is going to wait to start the reflection, right? Because what we hear is the copy of the original sound bouncing on the walls. So, you know, we are pretty much saying that this copy of the sound that will come back to us, it will start after four milliseconds of your original sound. All right. So, of course, you can go a little bit, uh, a little bit more. And if you go to room, this is going to get a little bit uh, much more uh, noticeable. So everything sounds really close. Now, if I go and do all the way, go all the way, we get that bouncing. So of course, you can go short or, you know, or much longer. It depends on what you want to do. It depends on the instrument or uh, wh what are you using uh, with this reverb. So then we have the diffusion. Now, uh, the diffusion will make the reverb sound much more smoother or much choppier. So uh, let's uh, pretend that you're in a bare uh, naked room. So when the sound bounces on the walls, it will just come back to you uh, directly, right? But maybe you're in a studio, in a professional studio, where they have panels and the reflections of your sound they will bounce on the walls where they have panels and the uh, reflection is going to diffuse so you will get a much nice, smoother sound. Well, this is what the diffusion is. 
it, you know, it's what it does. It's going to diffuse the sound. So if I play something and I go all the way, uh, all the way down, uh, the sound is going to get a little bit more choppier. But if I go all the way up, it means that we have a lot of panels in our studio. So we get a smoother sound. Choppier, smoother. So then you have your width control and your mix control. And of course, this is pretty obvious. I know the mix is how much of the uh, original sound you're going to get and how much of the reverb sound you want to blend with the original sound. All right. Of course, if we go all the 100%, uh, we can just listen to the reverb one. And of course, the width is just something that will just make, make the sound wider, not very specific to the, uh, to the reverb. And then, of course, we have this weird looking thing we have uh, in the middle. And this is going to be the controls for the late, uh, the late mix. So, of course, we subdivide everything in early, between early and late. So, if you have a nice early, you can mix it with a little bit of late. Now, as we uh, talked about uh, previously, the early is what comes back to you first. But then, of course, some sounds will come back uh, to you much later. So, you know, this is the controls for that. Now, of course, uh, by default, this is the configuration we don't get. If I go by default, this is what we get. So if I play it, notice it sounds much, much bigger. But of course, some people, they will do 100% of the uh, early and they will just go 100% of the mix. This is going to ruin everything. It's too much. So what you can do in real life, you can just add a little bit of late mix. It's going to sound much, much better. So again, this is the control for the uh, late mix. How much do we want from this late uh, to mix it with the early and then, of course, uh, to mix it with the final final sound we're going to get. So maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't. Right here, we have a visual representation of what's happening with the original sound and the, uh, and the reverb one. So you, we can see a white line and then a yellow line. So the yellow line is going to be the late representation, the reverb sound. And the wide is going to be, you know, our sound, the main original sound. So if I go right here to late mix and I increase this, notice that this white line is going to go really crazy. It will never calm down because we have large reverb. So again, you get a nice, uh, a nice way to see what's going on with the sound that you're generating uh, with the reverb. So within the late, you have the uh, this control, which is going to be the rever reverb time. And uh, this one, of course, will control how long this late uh, reverberation is. So if I play it again and go really crazy, we're going to get a super long reverb. Now, remember, and, you know, it's going to take a little while to get down. So the, remember, the late is a sound that comes back later. So if we go all the way, the sound, it's kind of uh, getting stuck right there. It's just bouncing and will never go back. And it's because the control, the reverb time for this one, it's really long. We get a top of 31 seconds. Yeah, it's just absurd. So, of course, if you play, uh, if you go all the way on this one, uh, the sound that will be just uh, bouncing uh, the, in the background, the late will never come back, will never go down. So that's why we get this enormous buildup. All right. So pretty cool. Now, maybe you're thinking, dude, isn't this like a pretty delay? This is, isn't basically what we were doing with the early. Well, kind of, because right now on the pretty delay, when we play it, this is the sound that will start uh, playing after the original sound, right? So this is pretty much the same. But of course, this one, we get a top of 100 milliseconds because everything is short on the early. On the late, we start at 300 milliseconds. So it's much, much later. Even, uh, even though we, we go all the way down, we still get 300 milliseconds of the late reflections. So we still get something, right? Of course, as we go down, go up, we start to get everything. So I know that some people like to go all the way up with knobs. This is not the case for this knob. Just do a little bit and you're going you're gonna to be fine. Then, of course, we have the buildup. So the buildup, it's pretty much like the diffusion. This will make everything uh, sound choppier, just like if we go all the way to the left, or everything sound a little bit smooth, smoother if we go all the way to the right. If I go right here and do a little bit more of late mix, and maybe I'm going to go and go default on these two buttons. We're going to talk about this in a second. And I play it again. I'm going to go all the way down and build up. 
and everything is like choppier. If we go all the way up in the build up, everything is smooth. So again, if uh, your reverb sound, it sounds like pumping or choppier, go to the build up or the diffusion and go a little bit up. So then we have these two lines. And uh, if you ask me, this was the, the most confusing part after, you know, you check the manuals or you actually play around with this, you see, oh, okay, so this is what it does. But at the beginning, it's just a little bit confusing. So this, what, what this is, is just like an EQ. If I go all the way uh, down on this one, and I'm gonna go and just copy this one to the drum loop number two. And uh, I just uh, have uh, some, nah, some hi-hats and uh, snare. Let me just play the uh, track. And I'm gonna do it without reverb. All right, so pretty cool. So that's what, what we have. So of course, uh, we're right here, I'm gonna go all the way down and all the way up to the, to the uh, all the way to the right with the blue and the red. Now I'm gonna go and play it. All right, so we can hear a lot of the hi-hats, a lot of the highs, and a lot of the uh, rim shot. Now, of course, what you can do with this one, and notice that it says L and it says high, uh, H. So I H for highs and L for lows. So yeah. So what we can do, let's say that if I play this, I can see that right here, we can hear my sn the snare, right? So I can position this on this part and notice the part of the sound is just going lower. So now with this knob, what you can do, you can go up and you can boost this signal before it goes there. So what you're doing, you're boosting the rim shot. So you hear a little bit more of the, uh, of the uh, rim shot. So it's basically like doing a little bit of EQ. Now, of course, since you can boost the rim shot, you can cut it. If you go all the way down, notice that the rim shot is not there anymore. If I go a little bit more mix, we go up, we get lots of the rim shot. All right, so I'm gonna do it just a little bit. So as you can hear, the hats are a little bit annoying. So with the H, with this control, you can do pretty much the same. If you want, you can boost it and you get a lot of hiss, but maybe it's a little bit annoying and you wanna cut it down. So you just go down and you have a lot of the ring shop and not a lot of the uh, higher frequencies of the reverb. So again, this is just like a nice EQ we get within the reverb to control a little bit more of what happens uh, with the sound. So then we have this tank effects and the wet effects. And these ones are uh, really special for us. I'm gonna go and kind of uh, disable the, uh, right here, the uh, EQing. And uh, I'm gonna play it again. I'm gonna add a little bit of late mix. Maybe a little bit less on the late. All right, so you know, we get lots of reverb. Now, if I go right here and let's say I want to cut some of the frequencies we get on this reverb, I'm gonna go and bring in a cue, and if I start cutting, I'm gonna be cutting the higher frequencies of the reverb. So we just, you know, get that. Which is a problem, because maybe I want to get, I want to uh, kind of uh, keep the original sound, but I'm cutting if I add a plugging, uh, an EQ after the sound, after the reverb. So I'm gonna go and delete this, and this is why we have the tank effects. So whatever plugin we put right here, this one will react on top of the reverb sound, on top of the reflections. So if I go and play it again, and I start cutting, and it's very subtle. I'm gonna go and cut them. Notice that the higher frequencies are just not there anymore. If I go a little bit obvious and go all the way up, and all the way up on the late mix, That's it. So we are cutting what is gonna go to the reflections. That's it, that's the idea. So of course you can add a chorus, you can add whatever uh, effect you wish. Now, what is really useful is this wet effects. Now, of course, uh, as we know, uh, when the sound goes into a reverb, uh, it's gonna go and then uh, it's gonna get, the reverb will create a copy of our original sound and that, ori and that sound, that copy will go to the reverb. And then at the end, everything is gonna get blended, right? It's gonna get mixed. Now, this wet effects is something that we can use that will go bef uh, to this copy before it goes to the reverb. So let's say that we want to add reverb, but we want to, cu to cut uh, the hi-hats. So in this case, we're gonna go to the wet effects, 
And uh, with, the, with the plugin, we can now just cut the higher frequencies. So the hi-hats will not be feeded to the, uh, to the actual reverb. So when we just play it, notice that we just don't get the reverberized uh, higher part frequencies of the, uh, of the original track. We just get the lows. If I turn it off, we get the hi-hats. So pretty useful because most of the times you just don't want all everything that the uh, you know the reverb is gonna do. You just want you know parts of this. So in conclusion, let me just delete the EQ. Uh, the reverb is kind of good. It's pretty good. Of course, it's not better than Valhalla Room or you know any other plugging uh, where you pay two hundred bucks. Of course not, but it's usable and it works. I've used it many many times as you can see, and it works really good. The problem is that. You know, since you know, don't know what the controls are or people don't know what the controls are, they start, you know, going all the way on this one. This is just going to ruin everything. The only thing you need to do is just use a little bit, select the, the type, of course, use maybe a little bit of the pre-delay, whatever, uh, pre-delay, whatever you want to use, just a little bit, uh, a little bit of mix, a little bit of late mix, and just cut what you don't want and boost what you want. In my case, I'm going to go and just boost this one. I noticed that the build is just like too much. Well, just go down, man. Too choppy. All right, so we're gonna get, make it a little bit more smoother. It sounds pretty good. Let me just let's say that I want to cut a little bit of the hi hats. I'm gonna go and cut them. No reverb. Sounds like crap. Much better. Maybe too much. I'm gonna go a little bit less. So it's a nice reverb. Look, just notice how long it took me to, to get a nice sound out of this. Once you get the controls, everything is just uh, pretty easy.